тебя. coffee in that cup earlier today. Didn't quite wash it out before I put the beer in. It's kind of like beer flavored coffee. It's nice, actually, surprisingly. Rainy day here in Nashville. Uh, had a really, uh, had a nice, I had a nice socially distanced writing session <laughs> with my buddy Clint. And uh, and we're uh, we're on, we're we're on to something. We're on to a song. Maybe we're halfway through a song. It's hard to know because you know there's a song. You know, 
oftentimes, it's kind of funny, right? Like, oftentimes, a lot of the song is the concept of the song. And, uh, and sometimes, just getting down some words, a verse, and a chorus, and a concept. It's a really good, it's a really good start, you know? Maybe it only feels like it's half. But, uh, but it's really fun to be, to be on to something, you know, and know that it's not quite figured out yet. Not quite figured out yet, but, uh, and it's great. And it's just, it's just a joy to write with a great writer, too. Uh, uh, fun adventure to write with somebody else. Every time. Every time. It is a fun adventure. Yeah. So there you go.
could be Adam. <laughs> I get it, third time's a charm. Well, not the smoothest performance of that particular tune I've ever played in my life, but we got through it together, didn't we? Try this one. I've only played it a couple times for y'all. And it was written, uh, it was written the first year I was writing songs. Way, way early. I don't even know if it's finished. <laughs> maybe it's never meant to be finished. Maybe. Maybe it's never really meant to be anything more than just a sketch. Uh, yeah. This is called Long Time Gone. She said at him sometimes Life 
jump outside my head And I just thought I'd call on you What do you think that I should do? finished school What do you think that you should do And I don't know what to believe so to long time gone Thank you for the claps and the love for that one. Thank you. for sticking with me here. When I... Usually when I plan to play a song in a weird tuning, I will, uh, I will have a second guitar with me to avoid having to make through, way through the worst of that. This one is uh, going out to a uh, gatherer that we lost. Uh, 
friend, uh, our friend Judy. I wish, uh, I wish I seen her smiling face at a lot of shows, and uh, and I'm sad that she's gone.
to our friend Judy. funny our story uh, there were a lot of artists here in Nashville a lot of artists and a, a lot of songwriters a lot of great musicians when I think back about the journey that uh, that, uh, that I've taken as as an artist, it's a pretty, it actually, it's a pretty unique one, especially for around here. You know, we started playing shows in every bar and any bar that was willing to hire us. We play all night long. And out of those nights, we maybe gained one listener at a time. Two, and uh, for years, it's a hard thing to survive for a long time. And the fact that, um, the fact that we're still making music, and I'm still able to write songs, and there are so many of you out there that are interested in listening, it's a pretty amazing story. I appreciate it. I appreciate it every day. I appreciate it even more when I'm around so many other artists that haven't taken the road that I've taken. And, uh, uh, I don't know, it's a road I'm proud of. But we all carry scars from the paths we've walked, right? And, uh, and, uh, and there were a lot of hard times in there. And it's easy to look back and kind of glorify the journey, but a lot of it did not hold a lot of glory. <laughs> There's a lot of late nights and loadouts and practices. And hmm. Hey, you know what? We don't have a logo up tonight, do we? I've been slacking off, gatherers. Come on now. How about this? We're going to put this one up because I sing about turtle in this song. Down, losing 
legs to fall, yeah. Kick up the drama line of the sand, Thank you for the 
claps and the love. And the fireballs. And the guitar emojis. Isn't it funny? Aren't humans amazing? Aren't humans amazing? Amazing. You go to a show in a room full of people, everybody has their different kind of way of clapping and hooting and hollering after a song. <laughs> Isn't it incredible that we can be online and all scattered around the world and y'all still find a way to clap and hoot and holler all in your unique ways <laughs> at the end of a song. <laughs> I love that. And that we can all be so different and unique, right? But that something in the music speaks to something that is universal, that is the same about all of us. Never ceases to amaze me. In a dim reflection of a move I make, I get the feeling every moment is at stake. In a quiet hour, no one else around, try to gather up the strength to take this demon down. Keep my vision on the sky In another day you do or die And they tell me that with luck I may get back Well I'm waiting softly gonna take it slow Cause even when I look within I'm still the last to know gonna feed the fire gonna take my time gonna measure every breath and every fleeting sign I keep my vision on the sky In another day you do or die And they tell me that we look I may get back Well I'm Streets are dark and empty The leaves are on the ground A little bit of vision Laid in each brick of this time Half a mile of 
dust on autumn wind is cold and someday I learn that I'm as wise as I am old there's a great marvelous on the sky in another day you do or die and they tell me that with love I may get back well I'm waiting I'm waiting yeah. Should we see who it is? an abrupt way to finish a song, wasn't it? Hello? Aw. They done hung up. They done hung up on me. Think they're gonna call back? <laughs> uh, it's a weird sound. I believe back in the old days, they used to call that a landline. Actually, no. Back in the old days, that was just a phone. There was no such thing as a landline because you didn't have to differentiate it from anything else, did you? Hmm. Phone. Okay. Um, it was funny. I was writing with Clint. We had a, we had a good writing session. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, he made us listen to uh, Switching the Whiskey <laughs> again, even though he's heard it a bunch of times. Uh, he's about as excited uh, as we are about how things are going with the single right now. Uh, I have a statistic for you all. Let me see if I have it here. Um, my friend D, as of as of right before the gathering, there were 49,044 streams. 49,044 streams. Um, which means we are knocking on the doors of our first big landmark, 50,000. Unbelievable. Uh, so we're going to celebrate that by releasing the lyric video, uh, which probably happened sometime in the middle of the night. Um, Riley is at home her job tonight is she is literally staying in front of the computer and watching the counter on spotify uh and as soon no matter when it happens could happen at 3 a.m no matter when it happens she is going to release the lyric video so um hopefully she's coffeeed up or maybe we just bang this out in the next hour or two and she can go to bed at a reasonable hour um but, uh, but we're close, and that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting. Um, we're, also, uh, we're also finishing up the official music video right now uh, that I am so psyched to share with y'all. Um, uh, that's going uh, to be pretty great. That's going to be pretty great. Um, okay. There's the update. There's the whiskey update.
It'd be pretty cool if uh, if Clint and I finish this song tomorrow. We actually have uh, we actually have three unfinished songs. This one that we're kind of hot on the on the trail on right now. Um, but uh, uh, mm. it was really cool. We were talking today too, and uh, you know, Clint and I are pretty pretty old school. Um, we've both been at it for a while and, uh, I mean, it's all relative, right? But, uh, but, uh, for a lot of the writers out here, we're pretty old school, you know, like to be, like to be face to face to, to write. Um, but we both decided, uh, in the middle of the day today, in the middle of our writing session that, you know what, we could try writing some songs over Zoom. Why not? I mean... If we can learn to gather online, I can learn to write songs with my friends online around the country. And if we got into a rhythm with that, that would be such a great thing. Uh, be uh, pretty, pretty great. Anyways. <laughs> Draw my tuning. I apologize, gatherers. Let us 
Well, you know what, uh, I spent the morning, and we're really kind of ramping up, I spent the morning working with my friend Robin on, uh, on applications for the live gathering series. I want to talk to you about this just for a minute or two before we sign off today. I should have done it before our song. Not super organized. Uh, but, you know, last year, last summer, we decided that we were going to try to do this. And uh, we ended up playing close to 50 live gatherings uh, all around the Northeast. Um, in the middle of COVID, we did not have one case of anyone getting sick. Uh, it was an incredible effort, as you might imagine, for an entire community to come together in such uh, an impactful way. To get to share live music again was uh, was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, and uh, so hopefully, if, uh, if we can get our acts together, uh, if I can get my act together, uh, on Monday, we are going to be uh, we are going to be posting and announcing that applications are open to host live gatherings again. They're going to start up soon. They're going to start up in like two weeks. Not a lot of prep time, mm -mm. but they're going to happen all throughout the summer. Now, what's cool is that our booking agency is starting to book real shows again. Lots of outdoor shows this summer. Lots. Lots compared to the number of shows that we've been playing lately, which is zero. Uh, not lots compared to the 200 shows a year that we were playing before COVID started. But we're going to be out there touring again. I'm really excited about that. Um, uh, but in between, we are still going to be doing live gatherings. And hopefully all of our live shows will also incorporate an online component. So... Those of you still at home, you'll be able to stay with us until we're out of the woods, until we're out of this crisis. That's, that's the plan, and that's the pledge. We're going to figure this out, and we're going to stay gathering every night one way or another. For those of you that don't know what a live gathering is, it's a pretty cool thing. We have people, just like you, apply to be hosts. And what it means to be a host is that you designate an area. For most people, it's their backyards, if they have a backyard. But some people have done live gatherings in parking lots and parks and uh, all sorts of unique places. It has to be outside, though, because we are going to stay socially distanced. Um, now, there's a whole bunch of reading to do. And for those of you that were hosts last year, uh, you'll be happy to know that we have simplified things a little bit. We are a little bit more knowledgeable about the pandemic, about smart ways to socially distance, about uh, the useful ways and the not so useful ways <laughs> that we attempted to socially distance last year. Um, and, uh, and so we'll be accepting applications. We will receive a ton of applications from all over the place. And you do not have to just apply if you're in the Northeast. That's the only place we could gather last summer, but that's going to be changing as travel restrictions ease up, as more and more people are vaccinated around the country. Um, and what we do is we take your space 
and we sell pods of tickets. Meaning for every group that buys a ticket, there is a pod, a socially distanced pod, most often in the form of a spray painted little area on the ground that is separated from all the other spray painted areas. If you buy a ticket just for yourself and you come by yourself, you will have a little pod to yourself. If you are coming, if you buy tickets for you and your family, your pod will be bigger to fit you and your family. Um, we take the square footage of every place that we play. We factor in barriers between pods. And as we sell tickets, we subtract that square footage. That's our, our algorithm. So we never sell more tickets than the space can hold. Uh, we've worked out protocols for everything from showing up and finding your pod to going to the bathroom. Uh, and, uh, and man, it was such a successful, it was such a successful little tour last year. I can't wait to start it again. And literally, we're going to start in a couple weeks. It's all going to happen soon. I want to invite you on Monday, when the applications are out, to take a look and see if you might want to be a host. I'm warning you in advance. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to do it right. Um, but uh, but I think those of uh, you gatherers that are on the board that have hosted um, know that it's a lot of work that's worthwhile. It's a pretty special thing. <laughs> uh, what we are also going to do that's different from last year, some of you will be interested in knowing, is last year um, uh, uh, it was just, we did not make tickets public, but this year we are giving hosts the option if they would like to open up their concerts to gatherers from their area, maybe that they don't know. Hosts will have the choice to either do that or not do that as they feel comfortable. But, uh, at this point we feel, uh, we feel pretty confident in our system and, uh, uh, and we feel incredibly confident in this amazing community. So uh, um, this is going to be a tour this summer that inspires a lot of people, not just those of us that are attending the live gatherings, but those of us that are watching what we're doing from all over the country and all over the world. And uh, I'm very excited to embark down that journey with you all. It's all going to start happening next week. All right. <laughs> Please stay safe. Keep on looking out for one another. And I will see you tomorrow.